Welcome to Battersea Park everyone. This is uh, London South West 11 and I've had a few requests to, uh, to do a little film on the Buddhist Peace Pagoda which is a few yards in front of me and it's one of the most celebrated Buddhist pagodas, temples in Europe and we go and have a look at it and I'll give you a little tour around of it uh, but this is Battersea Park and it was open to the first open to the public in 1865 during the reign of Queen Victoria uh, prior to that it was actually uh, a dueling ground for British aristocrats like the Duke of, the Duke of Wellington who defeated Napoleon Bonaparte uh, in 1815 and he came here one day and had a duel with a rival both of them were injured but not seriously and they lived to tell the tale uh, I'm going to reverse the camera in a moment I'm actually driving into the sun so it's actually getting blocked out a little bit but we're about a minute or so away from the from the Peace Pagoda and it was placed here in 1984 uh, by a Buddhist monk called Nikodatsu Fuji and he was uh, preeminent in Buddhist circles as, as an advocate for world peace and he actually witnessed the horrors of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and decided to set up a world peace movement let's have a look at the the pagoda now It's actually, I'm on a bicycle, I'm going to get off in a moment. Bear with me and give you a proper tour. It's actually uh, 35 and a half meters high and the top section is made of concrete and wood. I'm going to give you a panoramic in a moment. So. And there's four golden gilt statues on either side of the uh, pagoda and each one of them represents uh, a phase in Buddha's life. Let us get up there now and do these and then I'll give you a panoramic a little bit later. It's actually positioned just by the River Thames, as I say, in Battersea Park. And there's a few people who have requested this so I hope I'm doing a, doing a decent job. But let us, there's four entrances to each uh, gilded, uh, gilded statue. Uh, and I'm going to go to the one by the river now. Here we go. And each statue is actually depicting, depicting a mudra. And each mudra is characteristic of a, a certain phase in Buddha's life. And this one here is actually teaching and enlightenment with Japanese writing underneath. Every year on at least two or three occasions uh, a, a large amount of Buddhist monks come here and actually worship and celebrate and as I say it's just perched on the uh, River Thames and the second one you can see those of you familiar with mudras I'm sorry, but I can't do anything. The sun is not in an advantageous position. But this one is Buddha's enlightenment. The one we've just seen before was teaching, leading to enlightenment. And this is his phase of enlightenment. And you can see the, the, the mudra that he's doing. And I'm sure that certain people who are watching this who do mudras will actually know exactly what each of them represent. I'll do the final two statues and then I'll give you a panoramic from the river. As I say, it was built in uh, 1984. And this one, 
the third one is actually representing death death and rebirth uh, they're very very beautiful and they're, they're, they're sacred and you're not allowed to climb on the the pedestal thing there and actually go anywhere near them so we've, we've seen teaching enlightenment and death and obviously the final one is birth that's a panoramic of Battersea Park which as I say was a dueling ground uh, up until the mid 19th century when it became open publicly as a park and the first one is actually birth as we can see here and that's quite a powerful mudra that the Buddha is doing uh, they're very very finely made and uh, the whole thing is quite an astonishing achievement so we have the mudra of birth which is that one birth teaching enlightenment and death I'm gonna uh, be quiet and I'm gonna take you around to see them again and then I'll do a distance shot It actually goes in this progressive order from birth, learning, which is this one we saw first of all. Birth, learning, and as, as I say, enlightenment and death will be the final two. It's a very, very lovely autumnal day. It's uh, late October. I don't know what the date is, about the 17th or something, 17th or 18th, and this is enlightenment, that very, very precious, much sought after thing of enlightenment. And there we have it in total peace and serenity. As I say, it was built in uh, 1984. So it's been here like for 37 years or something. And it's a beautiful sight when all the Buddhist monks come here and in their orange and saffron robes and actually worship at this pagoda and there we have death very very beautiful indeed and the perimeter of the park actually goes on for one mile and it's uh, it's known as the Sri Chimnov Peace Mile uh, named after a Buddhist monk who came when this was unveiled and actually uh, did a peace walk around the park which is obviously a mile and in this park there is a children's zoo and there is also uh, fountains and lakes and things and from where I live it's about I've cycled down and it took me about only 15 minutes or something it's only about a couple of miles away but I'm going to give you a panoramic now Flow gently, sweet Thames, until I end my song, for I sing not loud nor long. Edmund Spencer, the Fairy Queen, and the seagulls chirping up in the background. The bridge there is Albert Bridge, which is lit up of an evening time gloriously. The site is like some, something out of a, a magical fairy tale, named after Prince Albert once again, and it leads into the district, district of Chelsea, which is the beginning of where all those trees are. And the second bridge is Chelsea Bridge, which connects the dis district of uh, Battersea into Sloane Square and to Chelsea. Let me see if I can get a panoramic of this now. Do bear in mind I'm an actor and a playwright and I'm not a cameraman. Uh, Don't 
Om mani padme hum. Om mani padme hum. Om mani padme hum. Om shanti shanti shanti. Om om om. And we know someone who's watching this, who's requested it, who has a company called Pom. Something to do with poetry. Poetry and poesis. Hello, Emily. Professor uh, Motkas. I hope you're enjoying this. As I say, my camera work is not of the best, but I, it's, it's made with a good heart. Uh, and when you come to London in a few weeks, I'll bring you here and we'll have a little bit of a lunch because there's a nice cafe about uh, half a mile away or something in the park. So that's the Battersea Peace Pagoda, London and one of Europe's most famous. The guy who, the Buddhist monk I should say, who instigated this, uh, Niku Datsu Fuji, lived to be 100 years of age. So the, he must have been doing something right, obviously. Uh, and there we are back at the learning uh, image. I don't know what the mudras are, but I know that a certain professor who's very, very pretty and does very, very good light language will know what they are. Uh. I'll try and get one more shot with the sun behind me because when I started doing this, I had no idea about the sun in front and the sun behind or the sun's behind if it has one uh, we say in Britain for my American friends for ass we say behind sit on your behind uh, that's better isn't it because if the sun is in front of you the whole thing is completely blurred you can't see anything a prayer for peace in the world and for joy and for happiness which seems to be very very sadly lacking these days and people come and do sports on this little, whatever it is, this pavilion here, doing a bit of boxing, very, very nice now, and skipping and so on. I used to do that when I was, when I was a lad, but... Uh, lost my partner, what do I do? Skip to my loo, my darling, skip, skip. Skip to Malu, skip to Malu, my darling. Now we're getting a good shot, Noel. Very, very good. I must get a tripod. If anyone has one that they don't want, you can actually send it to me. Oh, that's beautiful. Hang on. And we've got a perfect day for it. Thank you very much for watching. My two viewers and my three-legged dog in South End on Sea, Max. Woof, woof, woof. How much is that dog star in the window? You can't be serious. I'm very, very serious. Look at that girl. Skip, skip, skip. No, I wish I could do that. Dear me, no. I could once upon a time. A perfect London vignette in a very, very beautiful location. L London is a very, very beautiful city. It's made up of lots of little villages and towns all sort of adjoined together. But it is a really, really beautiful city. I won't take you to the zoo, otherwise we, it'll be, the video will run for about seven hours and I actually damaged the algorithm. So I've done enough of that damaging algorithms. Thank you all for watching. It's been a joy. And I hope it comes out. I hope it comes out okay when I actually try to uh, actually upload it and so on. That it's not too too annoying to watch. Lots of love to Emily uh, and to Melissa, and thank you for your support and your encouragement. I think you like this one, especially as I've got out of that garret uh, poetic apartment that I live in. Uh, I've got my big fat head out of the way, and I've let the people skip and and Buddha just say nothing just look on quietly what a lovely scene that is i could leave it running for about half an hour i think i shall
there is a, th thank goodness I haven't forgotten, one of my most favourite quotes, which I would like to share with you all. Uh, it's one of the best I've ever heard. It's absolutely incredible. And it's to my friend, uh, Friedrich, Friedrich Nietzsche, whose birthday it was yesterday. He would have been 171, born on the 15th of October, which makes me realise that today is the 16th of October. And if it wasn't for Nietzsche's birthday, I wouldn't have known that. Uh, 171 years of age, Friedrich Nietzsche, and I'm sure he's enjoying this video. And with regards to Buddhism, he had a very, very famous quote, which I will share with you. Uh, Christianity promises everything, but it delivers nothing. Buddhism promises nothing, but it delivers everything. I'll go along with that, Freddy, baby. Have a very, very lovely evening. Lovely afternoon, lovely morning if you've just woken up. This is Noel Troy from the Capital Hermes Healing Channel in London Town in England. Bye for now and thank you for watching.